Uh, the workout went very good. It was really competitive. Uh, we had a lot of guys out there that were high IQ players and played really hard. So I feel like it was a good workout. You know, I feel like I did good individually, uh, just showcasing my talents and playing uh, basketball and showing my IQ and my playmaking. So, so yeah. When you go up against a guy for the third time yeah. <laughs> in a matter of weeks, yeah. how does that affect the way that you compete? Um, honestly, I feel like uh, for me as I hear, it's fun. Like, we enjoy playing against each other. Uh, we're both competitors. And, like, seeing each other so much, it brings the best out of us, you know, just playing hard, making sure that we're playing and we're always on our toes so we know one another is going to uh, come at each other and, you know, compete. So it's, it's a fun opportunity, honestly. So, so, yeah. How many workouts have you done so far? Uh, this is my eighth. Yeah. So. Do you have any more planned after this? Uh, yeah, I fly to Milwaukee right after this. And then um, I have Portland. Um, and I think a couple more after that. So. What's the process been like? Is you know, obviously we're getting close to the draft. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's just been a lot of flying around. You know, uh, just flying each place and making sure you try to give your best everywhere you go. Uh, like you said, played against players that you already played against, but just showcasing your talents and try to show them why you deserve to be on the court and why you belong in their program. So, so yeah. What sets you apart from some of the other guys you've worked out with? Uh, I would just say my playmaking ability is my first thing, being my size and being able to be a playmaker and make plays for my teammates, uh, being able to score the basketball well, and just being that versatile all-around player really helps me a lot because uh, I can kind of squeeze in anywhere as a player, you know, defensively, offensively, uh, passing. So there's a lot of different stuff I feel like I bring to the table. So. Do you think your versatility is one of the things that you can bring to the Wizards? Um, I definitely think so. Uh, just being able to be somebody that squeezes in when guys need breaks and stuff like that. I understand coming in as a rookie, you know, I'm not going to have the biggest role, but um, I understand what I got to do to get on the floor and my opportunities and how I got to make the most out of them. So, so yeah. The, uh, your uh, free throw percentage was, mm -hmm. wasn't bad. Your three point percentage, probably not where you wanted it to be. What have you been doing since the season ended to work on that? How do you think that, yeah. is, that work has shown in these workouts? Um, honestly, it's just been a lot of repetition, you know, um, a lot of, you know, my mechanics, I didn't feel like were terrible. It was more of my shot selection this year, just some of the shots I take, uh, were taking weren't very good. Um, but it's just been repetition, uh, making sure I'm in the gym, putting up shots, and I feel like I've done a really good job showcasing that, and I feel like a lot of teams are impressed with my shooting right now, so, so yeah. You're 18, right? Yes, 18. So at the end of the uh, workout, mm -hmm. talking to Ernie Brunfeld, yep. shirtless, yep. you seem very confident, very <laughs> comfortable. Um, where do you get that? Uh, I would just say that just comes from me putting in the work and me knowing who I am as a person. Uh, just, you know, I feel like if you know who you are and you know you're prepared for these situations and you've given everything you've had, then there's no reason for you not to be confident. I feel like it's the people that don't give their all and try to take shortcuts around the process that, that don't feel comfortable, you know, so, so yeah. You feel more comfortable on the ball or off the ball? You play point guard in high school. Yeah. The yeah. transition to college is amazing. Where do you feel more comfortable as going to the next level? Um, honestly, I feel comfortable with the ball in my hands, you know, uh, just being a big guard. I feel like uh, I make the ball move a lot, you know, making plays for others, uh, being a big guard. I can see over a lot of people and, you know, create spacing and stuff like that. But off the ball works too, you know, so either way. Have you met with the Wizards before today at the Combine or anywhere else? I'm at the Combine. I talked to them, yep. So. so what kind of feedback do they give you either then or now? Uh, just kind of the same thing that I'm talking about. You know, I got to be able to space the floor in my shooting. Uh, got to get stronger, uh, more athletic. You know, um, I feel like now they kind of see like I'm really athletic and stuff like that. But uh, just like a lot of stuff like that, you know, the same thing everybody's kind of been saying. But I feel like I've been proving a lot of a lot of stuff wrong throughout these workouts. So, yeah. The, the idea of positionless basketball sort of, sort of keeps advancing. Yep. You're often listed as a small forward. You mm -hmm. just reference yourself as a big guard. How do you kind of see yourself out there in the court? Honestly, it doesn't really matter. I'm a basketball player. You know, like I said, I'm just looking for my opportunity to get in, whether it's the three, the two, or the one. You know, uh, I just, I'm just trying to make sure I can be a player in the NBA and, you know, be a versatile player and do whatever a team needs in order to get the W. So, honestly, that's my personal opinion on it. So. Otto is there kind of, you know, taking in the yep. workout. Now. What do you know about him and the rest of the Wizards roster? Uh, well, I know Otto went to Georgetown, you know, uh, big guard like myself. Uh, I feel like he has a lot of length and he scores the ball very well. Um, he had a pretty good season last year. And, you know, I feel like you guys have a lot of good guards right now uh, between Otto, John, and uh, Bradley Bill, you know. So um, I feel like it's just one of those situations where I feel like I can get in whenever one of those guys need a break and kind of show my uh, my ability to play on the court. So, so yeah. Troy, what do you think of the, the wing depth in this year's draft class? And, you know, where do you think you fit in? 
Um, honestly, I feel like there's a lot of wigs in our class. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm the only like true, you know, like tall, versatile player in the draft. Uh, personally, um, I feel like there's not like a lot of height to the wings going on right now. But um, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel comfortable with it, and I like being unique. And so the versatility gives me a lot of uh, room to operate and do a lot of different th things to showcase my ability. So, so yeah. Last couple of weeks, you're a name that's kind of been on the rise. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, personally, I would just say going into the workouts, like I didn't think, I don't think people expected a lot out of me just because of the season I had. Um, I just felt like when I came in here, a lot of people had lower expectations for me as a player. And um, I know who I am as a player, what I could do on the court. So when I'm out there comfortable and I'm scoring, passing, playing defense and stuff like that, teams are kind of like amazed by it. But for me, it's just been something I've been doing ever since high school. So, yeah. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Focus TV. A lot has happened in the last week, um, so we got a lot to discuss. Uh, Octavia? Yes. No? Busy weekend. It's always busy. You know? it, it, is it going to slow down now since, you know, everybody's always sad when the finals are over. You have this long stretch of summer, and you got to wait all the way to October to see the playoffs for baseball. But um, I think it'll still be a pretty interesting summer. I mean, we got WNBA this summer. Mm -hmm. So I heard all the folks that are like, I have nothing to watch. Uh, WNBA, WNBA League Pass doesn't cost you anything um, in comparison to the stuff you pay for, you know, other packages I'm or whatnot. You. So I'll go ahead and check that out. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty much like Championship Tuesday. Got it. We had a couple parades today, oh, different right. parts of, <laughs> of this country. Uh, Cardell, what's, what's going on with you? I know we both fat, fighting the allergy thing today. Yeah, but, uh, we got a lot to talk about if you guys are following us. Got our Jordan flu game going. <laughs> <laughs> pow, pow, pow. I won't say it's that bad. You know what I'm saying? I, I say it's probably kind of like, you know what I'm saying, possibly a hurt hand type bad. Uh, Not a full flu. You, you took it down. Uh, I ain't saying that. Uh, what time can't is Can't wait it? to hey, talk look, about that. I am petty. A season's <laughs> over. I love it. Some of y'all didn't know how to act. Sometimes I've been oh right. so good <laughs> over this weekend on social media. I've done nothing but like and or retweet. I've done my best to be mature, but um, as an immature person, this is our platform, and I don't have to do that anymore. So I'm going to start today's show with the NBA final segment. Yes. Um, so we can queue up that uh, Warriors uh, trophy presentation video as we go ahead and discuss it. So what we're going to do, unlike most of the rest of the world uh, in sports media, we're not going to talk about this series in terms of both teams. We're going to try something different, which is called celebrating the people that actually won don't care about the other side and all the stuff that goes with it. We're going to try to hang, you know, Coach Kerr. In, I don't know, the present and talk about the team that went back to back. The team that is one, has now won three titles in four years. The team that is poised to try to keep this thing going as they only have one serious free agent to, to handle, you know, in terms of take care of business this year and one Kevin Durant. Clay Thompson doesn't come off the books until after next season. Draymond Green is on the books for another two seasons. Contrary to most people's popular belief, which all I've seen recently today is how the words are going to break up and who needs to get paid when, just, again, in actual reality. Uh, let's talk about the series. So, Octavia, your, your thoughts on, you know, uh, the brooms that came out in Cleveland? Man, let me tell you about these brooms. Okay. <laughs> First and foremost, uh, shout out. I give big props to the Warriors because I was one of the people that said I didn't think they would sweep them. I, I, I knew it was a possibility. But, you know, although we're not talking about that other team, there was one person on the other team that I thought wasn't going to go out like that, but obviously he did, you know, so. But, I mean. Go Jane. You know what That's what they call him, yeah, Go okay. Jane. What, what we say last week? L-O-E. <laughs> LeBron over everything. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it just – proves the point i feel like they did this not on, i mean of course they did it on purpose but i mean i feel like they really did it to prove a point like a how we talk set. right how we talk about it how we talked about last week that you know all everybody has always been talking about is lebron these last couple of years and they you know i feel like the warriors probably felt disrespected at the fact that they had won two of the last three uh before this one so i think it was like okay you know and if you think in my opinion this series was easier for them than their previous series so, you know, like, that should come. I mean, like, they didn't even have to, to me, exert much energy <laughs> for this one. So, um, 
and everybody's talking about people leaving and everything like that. I just don't see it. I mean, I mean, who of the key players have left over this four-year course? Harrison Barnes? And was he even considered a key player, you know, as it got further down the line? Um, so I just don't see it. I feel like they're all just, you know, so engaged. There's so much of a team. They enjoy playing with each other as a team. And how we always talk about there's never a need for one person to be the star. Like, I mean, as much as we talk about Curry every year, he hasn't won the MVP final. You know what I'm saying? So, but that doesn't bother him. You know, you've never heard him say, I'm, you know, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm trying really hard. I'm going to be the MVP finals and everything. He plays his position. They all play their position. They all play it well. And I just think they mesh well as a team. And I mean, even think about it, like how many rings uh, Steve Kerr got now? A lot. Yeah. I believe he, I believe he had <laughs> Six, eight, five seven. As a player. Five as a player, three as a coach. So he's at eight, I believe. You know, like I just, I just feel like it can't get no better that, no better than that. Like I don't, I don't foresee anybody leaving. I will be surprised. I mean, anything can happen in the NBA, as we all know, but we shall see. All right, Cardell, initial thoughts. You know, finals over, heading to this offseason, and whatnot. Just, just you know, again, focus being on the, 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 the back to back. I mean, I just think the Warriors were just dominant, but I don't think people realize how dominant. You know, they just see the final score and um, they just roll with that. Just see the sweep. But honestly, you know, when you dig deep, it wasn't even close. I mean, um, the points per game, 116 to 101, uh, the, dip, the defensive rating. Uh, the Warriors were at 108.5, Cavs were at 124.6. And people don't understand what the defensive rating is. It's points allowed over 100 possessions. So basically, the Warriors were only allowing 108 over 100 possessions, whereas the Cavs were allowing 124. Um, and, you know, even individually, Durant, 104. Steph, 109. Clay, 114. Draymond, 107. Compared to the Cavs, LeBron, 123. Kevin Love, 123. J.R. Smith, 126. George Hill, 127. I mean, it, it, it really, there really wasn't any resistance whatsoever, man. And you look at, and also the shooting. You know, Cavs shot 29% from deep as a team from three-point range um, for the finals. And 73% from the line with the Warriors shot 37% from three and 85% from the line. So you can't stop them. And they're lining you up, and you can't shoot. Um, it's a bad combination. And, you know, people around here got their little jabs at KD, um, which is, you know, typical of this Crabberry. You know, call it like I said. People get mad, whatever. But it's time to celebrate that dude. You know, he's the best player to come out the area, period. Um, second straight finals MVP. And uh, he put on one of the best performances, you know, you ever see in the finals, man. He averaged 20.8 points a game. 10.8 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 2.3 blocks on 52% shooting from the field, 40% 40, 40 shooting from three, and 96% shooting from the line, um, including the game three performance where you had 43, 13, and 7 on 65% shooting from the field, 66% shooting from three, and 100% from the line. That's insane. Insane. That's insane. So you see what I'm saying? And that's and people wonder why, like, why y'all getting on LeBron? What about that? I'm like, dog, dog. When somebody's lighting you up like that, and he's the top player, and you know you the top dog, man, you got to be like, hold on. I mean, man, look, if he like me up after that, I'll shake your hand, dog. You just on, man. But I got you got to give him some resistance. And that's why that game three, it was a wrap. Um, Steph, man, he, he, you know, they always say he's iffy in the final. Sometimes, you know, he, he finished with 27, averaging 27, 6, and 6. Um, you know, he ain't scored that well from the field 40%, but he made up for it from three, 41%. And he was perfect from the line for the finals. He didn't miss at all. Clay only averaged 16, but he shot 48% from the field, 42 from three, and 80% from the line. And then you got Sean Livingston coming off the match. He only missed two shots the whole dang finals, 13 for 15. He shot 86% from the – you see, that's where the Cavs lost, man. It was no defensive resistance. No one – no one just – sometimes, man, games – you got to win games ugly sometimes. All that pretty stuff, pick and roll, pass, and stuff. Sometimes, man, look, we just got to get stops and just grind this out, man. And no one was willing to do that. And, I, and I'm a firm believer that the team followed their lead. And if your lead is not willing to do that, I mean, how are you going to expect the role players to be do that? So, and, and you know, that's kind of what I think what Kobe's hitting at, man. Nah, man, you got to figure it out. You know, no excuse. You got to figure it out. That's your call. You got to figure it out. And you know what I'm saying? And Kobe's speaking from a place of experience because he came, he said he, um, he revealed, he talked to Michael Jordan when he got um, punished by the Celtics in the finals. And Jordan was just like, you got to figure it out. He's like, yeah, and Kobe won't make excuses. Man, they stacked on Boston. He's like, yeah, but they're going to be stacked next year. So what you going to do? You know, if, you, if you're going to keep thinking like, like that, there's no point in even showing up. If you want to win, you got to figure it out. And, you know, he figured it out. And, you know, they got him back and stuff like that. So, you know, 
but a little bit on the cash side outside of LeBron's 30, 34, eight and a half and 10. Um, the only person that averaged double figures in any category was Kevin Love. He averaged 19, 11 for the finals. So no one else averaged double figures in scoring points. Oh, I mean, God. I mean, scoring, rebounds, assists, nothing. Just, it wasn't even close. That's your series right there. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you pretty much got everything. So uh, there's no need for me to bring up my little numbers. But uh, you brought up Sean Livingston, so I'm, I'm going to throw on to those bench guys again mm -hmm. that a lot of people overlook. Um, because I guess the area I'm going to go, since you cover most, is that bench is, is probably the worst that bench has been in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Despite that, in his finals, you talked about Sean Livingston shooting 86%. Um, they got big, they got uh, JaVale shot well, mm -hmm. almost every shot at the well rim. Uh, the young boy, Jordan Bell. Uh, mm -hmm. effective as well. Some people didn't, you know, you, you overlook things like that, but he was, he was out on the floor and he wasn't a defensive liability where everybody, everywhere in this world where everybody's trying to switch everything, everybody doesn't have the personnel to. Young boy was sometimes put in precarious situations on, you know, at times against the best player in the world, he held his own. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you're not lock, locking LeBron down mm -hmm. as a youngster, but you weren't the weak link. You did enough to where your guys can help you. Um, it's team defense at the end of the day. It's amazing what can happen when you compete. And I think that's the biggest thing is the guys on the bench that competed. That that was literally all it was is there was activity. There wasn't a drop off in activity between you know the core guys and the other guys. Um, one area I want to point to you got you got people like Zaza to barely played. David West not that much as well. Uh, Quinn didn't really play in the finals. Mm -hmm. um, he played a role earlier in the playoffs through the injuries. Um, you know Patrick McCall pretty much after that injury. I don't really count this postseason as you know, anything indicative of what he has. But I would pay attention to what that what this team does in terms of retooling the bench. Um, obviously, you don't have a lot of money left, uh, but they draft pretty well. This is the deep class on wings. I think you're going to see the fact that Looney and Jordan Bell did okay at times playing the four and the five. Um, you probably, you're going you're gonna to fill Zaza's roster spot. Um, don't know what they're going to do with David West, but outside of the times they played bruising bigs, you know, I was, you know, he's kind of there just for the experience. Um, and I don't know if Nick's staying around or not, but that's just an area to, to look at. Um, you know, Bob Myers talked about that. He's touched on that a couple times already. So about retooling the bench to make sure it's easier on those guys next year during the 82-game uh, grind so they're refreshed come playoff time because because that's the tough part. Heard a lot of the words talk about the journey, the journey, the journey. I mean, it got to be hard. You know, you're playing for the second season. You still got to get through the first season. Um, and, you know, it's probably hard to mentally stay intact. That's why... So few teams rarely go back to back. Um, it's not always the physical; it's it's the mental staying in it, um, and literally just going through the process from beginning to end. So, congrats to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, one, one more thing, yes. People got, I want people to really, man, just just chill with all the hate, all whatever, whatever, whoever your team is. Just just recognize the Warriors for the like the great. I'm talking about like team. I ain't talking about yeah. talent. I'm just talking about how they sacrifice for one another. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a team, man. That's hard to beat. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about defensively, like. You see the rotations, man. They getting beat. I mean, they communicate. It's no ego. They they play the right way, yo. And 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 that's the difference why they won three of the last four, and everybody else trying to figure out how to do it. You you saw Houston do it in Spurs, but they couldn't consistently do it. And and, and you know, and my thing is with the Warriors, even though all, and they're unselfish on both ends. It's not just defense, man. I mean, I'm seeing guys take charge. I saw Steph take a charge on LeBron. Mm -hmm. Whereas we seen bigger, stronger I'm athletes early in the playoffs. They would come just move. They ain't want no parts of that. And then uh, you see how the narrative early, oh, he's the biggest, most fit, most in shape specimen we ever seen. Then they go up against people who weren't scared and just going to compete. All oh, that went out the window. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, it, that's that's their greatness. That's that's what impresses me most about them, how they sacrifice from one another on both sides. You don't get that from a team um, usually. Um, not like this. And just to piggyback off one thing you brought up is you talked about Houston. A lot of people were, you know, enamored with the Houston series. Uh and one thing that Draymond said that I do agree with, and I know I've brought it up to you as well, is prior to Andre getting hurt, they weren't struggling with Houston. Is when Iggy went down. Yeah. That Hamptons five lineup, because of that unselfishness, unselfish, this selflessness, rather, that balance. Um, and the fact that, you know, credit to Houston, they weren't able to sustain it. I love that you brought that up. The fact that they're able to sustain that level while integrating pieces is remarkable to me, and that just speaks volumes again to that culture. So, again, just give them their due. Don't worry about free agency as it happens. July 1st, still a little bit of, bit of a ways off. Just give them their due. That, that, that's all we're simply saying. Going to take a quick break, and when we come back, 
Um, we're gonna jump into uh, the Mystic segment. We got so much more. We got this week's nine four fifty breakdown. Uh, <laughs> Finest mag, big issue coming up. Yeah. Really interesting issue. Can't wait to see what you guys have to say about it. And the draft series this week. You know, we get closer to the draft. Uh, Cardell got another player for you. I got another one, and Octavia got pits. All coming up on this episode of the Focus TV. Capitals will have to break up their celebration for just a moment to get in the handshake line. T.J. Oshie, what a series he had. Hard, hard player through this playoff. John Carlson and James Neal. Carlson headed for unrestricted free agency. So is his partner, Michael yeah. Kempney. Amazing, isn't it? And just writing themselves a great story. Saw some of the emotions of Mark Andre Fleury. He's been through this handshake line three times with a better feeling. Twice now has lost. And again, another player who won't feel great about the ending. But how do you not? Respect how great of a season it was for Fleury. Tough handle, handshake line for Nate Schmidt, former capital. But on no person have we seen more excitement and relief than in Alex Ovechkin. He's won 15 NHL awards, the Rocket Richard seven times, the Calder, the Art Ross, the Hart, the Lindsay. In his 13th season, finally the biggest award of all. And Jim, think of all the comparisons with Sidney Crosby and Crosby winning three Stanley Cups. Now he's got one. And Crosby's best season was 15 goals in 09. Ovechkin with 15 here. As Obi goes through the handshake line, we go down to the ice and Scott Oak with Braden Holpe. Jim, thank you. Braden, you've been chasing the Stanley Cup for six years since you broke through in the 2012 playoffs, and now you have it. Tell me what it means to you. It's amazing. It's uh, absolutely amazing. Um, I, I don't know. It's uh, this group of guys, um, battle start, start to finish, what we went through this year. Um, amazing team in Vegas. Uh, it was just a, you know, it was a feeling you can't put into words. And, uh, um, you know, we did it in typical our fashion, come, come from behind too. Yeah, what were you thinking when your team was down one heading for the third period? You know what, in, uh, in between the second and third, we had the same same feeling in our locker room. No one was panicking, everyone was was confident. Um, I think we knew we, we could pick it up a level, and, and everyone did. Uh, absolutely amazing job by all these guys. I'm so proud of them. I um, uh, can't wait to uh, enjoy it with them. Braden, you have to know that that miracle save on Alex Tuck in the dying moments of game number two will not. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Um, <laughs> we had fun during our breaks, <laughs> if you guys never knew that. We have a great time. Only the people on uh, social sometimes get a chance to see what's happening here, so shout out to y'all over on Twitter. <laughs> um, that being said, this, this week's Mystic segment, uh, the Mystics are coming off the tough loss to the reigning champs, the Minnesota Lynx. Um, you know, this game happened the same night the Caps won the Cup. That's why we put them together in this segment. Again, congrats to the Caps. Um, big things for the city, man. Congratulations to them, all their fans. And, um, you know, I'm avoid being petty during this part. I wait a couple of weeks before I be petty. It's your day. Enjoy it. Oh. Um, for the Mystics, though, it was a tough loss to the Lynx simply because you saw late. They hung with the champs. Just you saw late game execution. You see what a championship team does. The Minnesota Lynx, even though they were in a funk, uh, talking to Sylvia Files after the game, she made a point just saying, like, they felt they know going to that game that they couldn't that slide couldn't continue. Um, and it was just late game execution. It was the little things, not boxing out. Uh, Minnesota made a living on the offensive glass. Obviously, you know, you have Sylvia Fobbs. It's not hard to imagine as to why. Um, you know, the Mystics did get Deladon back, but she wasn't 100%. Her, 
herself, um, as Coach said after the game. Get over to findersmag.com, mymonosports.com. Check some of these post game vids out. Um, as Coach uh, Tebow said after the game, you know, she had to play like maybe five to six minute increments because, you know, her win wasn't all the way there. Um, that being said, it was still a good performance. I like that. I like the lineup change. I liked uh, inserting Natasha Cloud as the point guard into the starting lineup. So it took Christy Tolliver off the ball a little bit. So she's a little bit more dangerous as a shooter. Coming off screens, things of that nature, let her stay in a rhythm. Um, and credit to uh, Natasha for continued development um, to earn that starting job. You know, it's something I feel, you know, since Tebow drafted her, you know, things need to be earned. Yeah. And credit to her for putting in the work to earn it. Also, like, I like Era Akin starting at the three, gives them another shooter. And I like the pairing between Latoya Sanders and uh, Deladon. Obviously, you know, we'll see who starts tomorrow night um, when they take on the Sun in Connecticut. Um, and Kurt Miller um, said on a conference call earlier today, he expects that game to go a little bit differently, knowing that, you know, again, last week, last week's show, uh, Washington's not going to be coming off dead legs. You know, they're not, it's, it's not going to be a case when, you know, it's a stressful schedule or whatnot, and they got some of their horses back. So look forward to see how that goes. Uh, but, Cardell? Uh, Anything you want to add? I just want to see them turn it up more defensively. Yeah. Uh, right now, they're ninth in the WNBA in points allowed at 82 a game. And, um, you know, and also 10th in the WNBA in turnovers. They average 14 per game. Um, I think Tolliver averaging 3.3 herself, which is kind of the reason why uh, the ball made a move, you know, get her off the ball because she's a daily scorer. But handling that ball 10th, the scouting report is out. They don't yeah. they don't respect her ball handling. They jumping, they jumping and they hedging hard and they trapping her, trying to force her into turnovers. Um, they're shooting the ball well from the field for the season, 45%. You know, they third in the WNBA in three-point percentage on you know, 35 So that's not the issue. It's just like what you said, little things, taking care of the ball yeah. and, and um, getting stops, consistent stops. If they do that, they'll be fine. They'll get back on their winning streak. And also, I know she's coming off, you know, the illness and whatnot. Um, they need Deladon to be Deladon yeah. sooner than later. Um, you know, so far right now, she's having the worst season of her career. You know, she's a career 20-point-per-game scorer. And she's only averaging 14.8 right now um, on 43% shooting from the field, 25% shooting from deep, 80% 80, 80 shooting from the line. But for her career, she shoots 46 from the field, 37% from three, and 93% from the line. You see, it's a, it's a big drop off. And she's the closer. You know, she, she's the one that they, you know, build a team around, so to speak. And she's the one that got to put teams away. And, and with her not being right right now, that's why they're struggling. You know, they hang with them to the end. And that's you know, outside the Connecticut game. Yeah. Um, they hang with them to the end. That's when they kind of pull away. So she get back into her form, you know, and they, they turn it up defensively. I think they'll be fine. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And that was literally the perfect example of not having, like, your guy was at the end of that Lynx game uh, where you can get the ball to them mm -hmm. in the situation and go get you a bucket or a great look. Um, still, you know, again, you know, this, this, this city sometimes likes to go full in on the doom and gloom part. There's no reason to, you know, early, it's still All too right, early. Man. And... Considering this is one of the worst starts of her career, they're still above 500. Right. You know, just keep things in perspective. Big picture, it's about the journey. So we're gonna keep it moving on to the 9450 breakdown. Uh, this week, offhand swipes off a dribble move. Again, Jamal Hayward at 9450. This week's breakdown is the offhand swipes off a dribble move. We'll see you guys on the other side of the break for this special issue of Finest Magazine. All right, folks, welcome back again. Thank you so much to Jamal Hayward. We thoroughly enjoy these each and every week. I told you, uh, I already know Travis Ellison is trying to put something, <laughs> some of this in the repertoire. So shout out to Trav uh, for always tuning in and, man, you know, uh, being a big supporter. And thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. We appreciate you guys. Again, give it a f get over to FinestMag.com, over to MyMindOnSports.com. All things focused, Finest Magazine, My Mind on Sports related, you know, that whole trifecta, all that right there. But this is what we're here for, man. Uh, Finest Magazine. Yeah. Interesting issue this month, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, how we get to, how do we get to this point? 
that uh when did you come up with this idea like i'm gonna go ahead and embark on this endeavor this huge endeavor it seemed like this is the year of the greatest everybody just throwing greatest <laughs> this and that out man you know even when they may not deserve it quite yet you know at all you know what i'm saying so um but I, it really comes from a few years, you know, when I travel, cover a lot of events and games, you know, you, you meet guys from all over the country, honestly, all over the world, and they talk about who got the best, you know, basketball throughout history, throughout the country, you know, you got New York guys, Philly, you know, Seattle, LA, Texas, you got all types of pockets, Chicago, you know what I'm saying, Detroit, and, you know, I always, um, you know, I just keep it real, I always say, we, I feel like we have the best. And they were like, man, we all got, y'all just got Kevin Durant and all. And I, then when I started naming off names and stuff, and they didn't, they don't realize that a lot of guys come from here. Like, I, I mean, I met, I can't tell you how many countless guys think Ty Lawson's from North Carolina or <laughs> uh, Elgin Baylor's from LA. You see what I'm saying? It's just, you know, you're like, hold on, man. Like, where y'all getting y'all info from? Right. Know your history. Exactly. So that's the, that's really the main focal point of this issue to, to educate. And it's not just on the men's side, the women in there too. Um, like I said, I, mean, I anticipate some of the women's rankings will ruffle some feathers on the men's side, but, you know, they get over it. You know, when you see the resume, which is why I put the resume there, you know, you can't argue against facts. Your opinion can be what it is, but it's so many accomplished players, man. Like, it's people, you know, that didn't even make the list that you, like, that top flight got it done. You know, and you just got to respect it, man. And um, coming in, I knew this issue was just too big for me to just come off, the, you know, the top of my head and make a list or whatever. So... I wanted to get a variety of people, people who are unbiased, because you can't just ask the same people. They're going to be biased towards their little cliques and circles and all that. I want people who be unbiased and just tell the truth. So, um, you know, obviously, outside of myself, you know, I reached out to Mike Jones for the matter. You know, he always – he showed love to me from the beginning. You know, you know, much respect on um, Coach Jones. Um, he gave me a long list, and obviously he had a few names on there that a um, couple I didn't, never even heard of. And then when I researched – I'm like, yeah, they definitely belong. So that's just from him, obviously, being much older, you know, competing and all that at a high level and knowing about that. Um, Ricky Goins from EDS um, and the Legend Coalition founder, you know, I reached out to him. He's deep, you know, has details on um, D.C. basketball. So, you know, he can give – he gave me a lot of names that most people may not know, you know, that did work as well. Uh, you know, friend of the show, Robert Petters of the Piss League, definitely reached out to him. He gave me a strong list. Um, he probably had the best list as far as female basketball players. You know, his it, it was I think the female side may have been longer than the men's. You know, and um, he, and the thing I like about him, he was tough. You know, he ain't just give it to people. You know, he's like, nah, he ain't, he ain't there yet. You know, you know that's I'm my man. He's here for a harsh critic. <laughs> he's okay. like, Yo, that he is. <laughs> and he's like, that's my man. But nah, he ain't there yet. He got to put in more work. So I respect that. And um, reached out to William West, PG's assistant coach, who has details. He was the coach and um. Um, DCI double and all that so in high school so he got deep ties and um obviously you know my folks Ed and Von Myers are game playing sports uh people may not know uh Ed Myers came up with Elgin Baylor and Will Jones in that area so he been here since basketball kind of started you know where it was recognized from that era to now coach at Georgetown you know he he, he recruited all that that great class that lost, that lost to Michael Jordan um matter of fact if you see the the, the famous shot with Michael Jordan shooting the shot You'll see Ed Myers behind John Thompson, like, you know, basically like, no, you know, like, but you, we all know what happened after that. You know, he coached at GW, Tennessee State, Coach Anthony Mason, Tennessee State. He recruited Mason when nobody really believed in him, and you see where he became in the NBA. And uh, he was assistant coach on um, the first college national championship in that area on UDC, and they had a couple of players that made it to the NBA. So his, you know, he's been schooling me on guys for, for a long time. So, you know, I just felt it was time. It was detailed. A lot of work. I mean, this this issue probably took the most out of me than any other issue. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, just making sure you know facts are there. Just having it be very detailed so people can understand why the ranking is what it is. And um, like I said, my my thing is I ain't even want to speak too much. I ain't really do too much writing on players. I wanted their resume to speak for itself. And like I said, if it was a situation where it was kind of neck and neck, where like maybe they were both dominant in high school, dominant AAU, dominant in college. And obviously what they did in the pros was separate the players. And, you know, that may be the reason why certain guys are ranked higher, even though they may not be more popular. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, that was just the whole gist of it. All right. And then before I already know we're going to hit, you know, a part of it where uh, once everybody sees the list, they get on Finders Mad, go check that issue out, see the list. I, I look forward to some of the, you know, the reactions and discussions that will follow. They should be entertaining. Uh, <laughs> that being said, from a broader standpoint, 
I hope everybody keeps in mind um, how much work was put in. And then if you just look at the, the list for the best of the rest. Yeah. It's good. Nice tough luck. Like, good gosh. The level of talent um, that's been touched on in, in, in this process is ridiculous. Um, I've been privy to see some. I've seen the whole thing, but yeah. been privy to check that out and and see different parts of it. And trust me when I tell you, one of the best parts, like you said, is the resume. And I like that there were any write ups because write ups would be biased. Yeah. You know, in some in some cases where you know we're gonna do the opposite of what you know most people do today. We're gonna stick with the numbers. Stick stick with the resumes and what's been done. And just to say, you know, somebody like I know I've been here. So you now it's, it's been many years. Been here since '97. That being said, still looking at it like. The whole, I still feel like I'm an outsider to a degree, because mm -hmm. um, I didn't come up in that with ties to the area in that regard. It's still amazing me when I was seeing the list, or even at Capital One that day when we we're going through some of it. Like my mind was like almost on overload. Like, oh my God, how are you going to put these people in this list? And then you knocking people down, and I'm like, how they get knocked down? But well, I mean, there's a case for this. Like right. it was crazy. I can only imagine what you and the rest of the panel. Right. Went through like it. It was seriously crazy though. Yeah, and and you gotta understand. I I'm glad, you know, God reached out, gave me some wisdom to wait till after the playoffs ended. Yes. Because when I was going to release it prior to that, Oladipo might have been on the best of the rest. Right. But the season he had me in all NBA defensive first team all star and all that doing the work damage he did in the playoffs. <laughs> not only did he get on the top fifty, he. he you know, he, he catapulted. Like, yeah, he took a leap. He, he took a hell of a leap. Yeah. And you got to respect that because, you know, that resume, it, 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 you know, what he did means a lot because not too many players, like I say, with Dominant High School and college, if they got to the league, accomplished what he did. You know what I'm saying? So he literally is an all-NBA player right now. And not too many people from this area has been able to say that. So, um, like I said, and, and like I, I, six women made the top 50. And, um, Which I love. You know, a lot of dudes and that were sending me lists of those, you know, sending me their comments and stuff. You and I and I was like, man, you're just speaking about the dudes. I'm like, well, what about what about the women? And they're and all of them that made that list are very accomplished. Man, well, Every well, single one of them, just from a resume standpoint. If you didn't know, you're definitely gonna learn. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna spoil anything for anybody. I thoroughly enjoyed the list. I urge you all to go check that out as well. Right. Um, and like right. um. And I, and I I think the hardest decision came between Grand Hill and Bowers. <laughs> yes. Um, it was like, well, obviously Grand Hill had a resume, but I feel like I'm penalizing Land Bowers for, you know, passing, right. which is not fair to him. But in college, who was better? You see what I'm saying? Um, Grand Hill might have had an edge in high school, being a McDonald's All American or whatever, but that's the whole point of being an athlete. You develop, and when I mean, when I hear Coach K saying that my time of coaching is two guys that stood above the rest in the ACC, and it's Michael Jordan and Len Byers, I'm like, that means something. I mean, that means a lot. And like, cause, not cause Grant Hill's his own player. Yeah. So when he said those are the two that stood above the rest, I'm like, man. And, you know, and um, I and, and like I said, it's, it's sad because a lot of youngers don't do their research. They don't even know how real Len Byers was, man. He was, like, kind of the similar stuff you see LeBron doing. He was doing at the college level. He's a free. So, um, you know, I, I you know. Check it out. I'm pretty sure people gonna learn a lot. I mean, you know, I'm not worried about the critics, man. This, this is different. This is more about being, you know, educating folks. So people gonna criticize all they want. Do your own list. You know, what I'm saying? it's as simple as that. Yeah, and and again, from a broader standpoint, it is it, it is definitely informative. Hope you guys check that out. You're definitely gonna learn something because there's no way in heck you know every single person on that mm -hmm. list. Because now I definitely was here like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> and then you telling me it's people that you had to go do research on. So definitely, definitely uh, congrats to you and everybody who played a role in it. Um, happy that the issue was out. You guys definitely go check that out. All right, so draft series continues, man. We've been doing this each and every week for quite a while. Um, before we get started with the draft series, how cool has it been to see some of the guys on our draft series list in for Wizards Draft workouts? Real cool. I mean, people need to listen. Now we know what we're <laughs> Means you guys are smart. <laughs> Gonna have a moment, you know. We don't <laughs> boast too often, but it's, it's been pretty cool sometimes. You know, when those lists goes out to see some of them names or whatnot. But uh, this week, man, I, I'm gonna let you go first because uh, that first video is just wow. So we gonna go with you first. And I'll follow up. We uh, got this week. Um, Michigan State. Um, Miles Bridges for uh, six seven two thirty. You know, just completed sophomore year. Um, Last season, he averaged 17.1 points on 45% shooting from the field. 
36% shooting from deep, and 85% shooting from the line, seven rebounds and two and a half assists. Um, you know, measured a 6'9 wingspan, which is always important defensively, and, you know, reach going for rebounds or whatnot. Uh, at the NBA Combine, when they asked him to do the vertical jump, he didn't do it. Uh, <coughs> for obvious reasons, you're about to see why. Uh, he didn't really need to. You can get to the top of the back of the board, you know, the backboard. I think that pretty much, you know, shows that, um, you, you know, you got enough bounce. You know, you, you, you're pretty good. So, uh, yeah, on, at Michigan State, they did a vertical, and he literally got to the top of the backboard on a vertical. So, you know, no need, no need for that testing. But the thing I like about him is – um, he's a versatile four. Even though he he was measured like six seven, uh, he two twenty two thirty. He got that grittiness that a lot of players from, you know, Flint, Michigan, well, all that where they come from, like Draymond Green. He got mm -hmm. that same type of grit. Like all those players, you know, that's what people don't know back in the day. That's when Mo P, Mateen Cleese, all those guys. That's where they came from. Won the national championship in Michigan State, so they breed tough hoopers, and that's why I think in this era with small ball. You know, you know, you basically got like six, eight, six, nine power forwards. He can more than he can more than enough handle his own down there and play the three. You know what I'm saying? So he's not gonna back down. Uh it's always a chance. He he's being projected in the lottery between, you know, you know, eight and fifteen, which means you know what I mean, we're eight and thirteen because that's the end of the lottery. So that means it's a chance he might slip, depending on the workouts and who's available and whatnot. Uh it's a chance he might slip and I think the Wizards got a shot at him. Um uh, you know, the pros about him, super athletic, as we just stated. You know, he can score and shoot from all over the floor. Um, fairly good score off the dribble. He can create his own shot. Um, he's very good at excelling off the move, like scoring off the move. A lot of athletic players don't do that. They just like, give me the ball and I'll figure out a way. But he he's he's vital, especially playing with a point guard like John Wall that likes to find people, backdoor lobs, screen and, you know, screen and slip, screen and roll and all that. Man, he's going to get easy points with those guys. Uh, he can make plays which is an advantage for him. If they put him at the four, they go small, put him at the four. Uh, Biggs going to have to stay with him. And with his athleticism, you know, that's going to be a matchup nightmare. Um, he's a good defensive player. Like I said, you know, they're tough. They're not going to just let you just do whatever you want. So he's going to get low. He's going to get into you and try to stop you. Uh, you know, he's a good shot blocker, obviously, with his athleticism and 6'9 wingspan. He can challenge shots and uh, make a play when, you know, on a fast break, try to run you down, get blocks. Um, and – that motor, man. You see it with Draymond, man. Like, that's basically his, his his protege, man. And you know there's a thing with Izzo throughout the years. He recruit players that got that dog, that motor. He don't have to try to get you to play hard. He, they automatically do it, man. And he got it. And that's what I love most about him, man. Like, you, you know, sometimes at times last season with the Wizards, too cool for school. Ah, man, we'll beat this team, man. And then they go down by 30 at the half. Then they try to fight back. I don't see this kid doing that. He going to compete from the beginning. You know, always, and and that's something that's missing across the board. And they may just players that compete night in, night out, man. Right? You know, it just don't give you a quarter or two before they wake up. You know, I can't stand it because by that time the game might be over. And um, then you looking up, you understand the it's 500 when you shouldn't be late in the season. Now you got to fight and play hard when you shouldn't. And uh, it takes its toll. Uh, the cons, he could be a streaky shooter. You know, it's times where he can, uh, you know, you know, he fails to hit a lot of jumpers. He can, he can miss like five or six in a row and not. Um, you know, I, I read scouts say he don't really have an elite first step. Man, I don't care about that, man. He look, he athletic enough to get to the lane, finish on guys, and he's strong. So if you do stay with him, he got another counter. He can hit you, and he can handle the ball enough where he can counter it and keep you off balance to get where he need to go. Um, one thing I think he can improve on is his post game with his strength and his motor and his aggressiveness and athleticism. He can do a lot of damage in that post, even if it's just getting guys off balance, up faking, and drawing fouls, getting to the line. You know, he'll be fine at that. Uh, sometimes when he, you know, like I said, you could be competitive to a fault. And his competitiveness sometimes gets the best of him when he tries to do too much. He'll try to take on the team by himself. But, hey, man, he young. He'll learn. You know what I'm saying? So I have no problem with that. And um, like every play, he has lapses defensively. Um, you know, I think he has the potential, if he really wants to, to be all NBA defender. You know, it's on him. But, you know, if he stays locked in and really study the game, you know, really be in tune with the scouting reports and who he's playing against, kind of like having a cerebral approach just like Draymond does, man, uh, that won't be an issue for long. You know, and I can see him always, consi you know, consistently being an all-NBA defensive team guy. So, um, you know, if he slipped to the Wizards, I can see him playing, you know, fitting in very well. You know, even if uh, he can play the four, like Marquise Morris getting foul trouble, somebody like that, Mike Scott getting foul trouble. 
um, he could play. Or if, like, Marquise or them playing a the five, he could play the four. Or if they go small, they might have Wall and Bill, Porter, with Kelly Oubre and Miles, you know, out there running. You got shooters spread in the floor. You know where all them Bill going to run to. Then you got Kelly and, and Miles going for the lob. It's hard for a defense to deal with that in transition. So he'll fit well, man. It's, and if he keep working and proving like he, how he's shown throughout college, and I've seen him in high school, um, you know, the sky's the limit. All right, so I'm going to continue um, off this theme of hardworking guys. Um, I'm going to double down on uh, – I'm going to mess up his first name. I've messed it up like three times already. But Kaida Bates Diop um, from Ohio State. 6'7", 4", 224 pounds, 7 foot 3 wingspan. Um, doesn't have the vertical that Miles has at all. Just Who 35 does? inches. Not too many do. Um, what I like about him is, you know, before you – know, he's one of those, he's a classic tweeter. You know, before, you know, in, at least now there's a guy like Draymond that some of these guys that kind of like you don't know exactly what they are. You can try to put them in them type of roles because, for instance, like a guy like that, he is young, kind of when he came to the league. People really know exactly what to do with him in terms of how to get the most out of him uh, before everybody went, like, everyone's going small ball. But uh, pros, uh, first thing we're going to talk about is defensive versatility. Um, at Ohio State, he averaged 19.8 points per game. Wonderful. 8.7 rebounds a game. That's what I like. Um, and then the 1.6 blocks a game. Again, six foot seven, and it's the wingspan. Looks taller than he is because of the – He's almost all arms and legs. Um, but the defensive versatility, uh, as you talked about with Miles with Draymond, light Draymond vibes on that end of the floor in terms of you see him on smaller smaller plays, you see him on post players, he's able to hold his own on that end of the floor. And we're talking about in this era, small ball and versatility with the team that won the championship. Guys that, that you can plug in and move that are seamless uh, defensively means he can play across many different lineups. Um, so that's definitely a positive. The other thing is he improved offensively every year he was in school. Um, he also fought some injuries and showed the mental you know, uh, strength to, to fight through all that. What I do like about him a lot is a lot of guys, you know, we talk about don't really know what to do with their back to the basket. He's comfortable in a post-up setting. So which is you were talking about, these, these tweeners, when it's time to move on up a spot to the four, a lot of them sometimes don't know what to do with their back to the basket. Um, he does. He also operates pretty well out the mid-range area. Again, somewhat of a lost art. In, in today's NBA of, you know, dunks and threes. So there, there is places offensively where he can um, contribute. And he also showed that he can hit the three. Is He hit it at a 36% clip this past season. So, no, he's not, you know, he's obviously not uh, curry or anything with it. But 36% is a respectable percentage um, for a, play, a player of this build. Uh, some of the cons, uh, he's 22 years old because, you know, obviously in this day and age, people don't like players that are, you know, not 19 and, <laughs> and teething. Uh, so 22 years old, um, another knock is he doesn't have a true position to some folks that might be a knock. It's the type of guy where you need to have a plan in place if you do select him. Um, and then, you know, again, jack of all trades, not one thing he's truly great at. But again, if you have a plan in place, he can impact he can work out. It can be a positive outcome for your team. <laughs> um, this is the type of guy that it can pack multiple lineups, as I said. Um, and then from a small ball standpoint, as you were talking about with Miles, there's so many things you could do with this because of that wingspan. Um, you can slide him, you know, three, four, five at times, depending on whatever the lineup may be. Uh, and then it, it kind of helps in two folds with the Wizards. It both gives you wing depth and some depth in the front court to a degree because he can play, you know, again, three, uh, three up, you know, three through five depending on the lineup uh and you know i just like the fact that he got better each and every year uh so that shows that you know you're willing to put in the work um so you know that that's why he was my choice for this week again just i know you guys heard the name draymond like three times like draymond vibes i'm not saying the dude's draymond green okay just full disclaimer for those that may have skipped past <laughs> they have <know>. selective hearing <laughs> the finer points of what i said and i'd say before we close out the show this week's uh pitch league updates if you will of course, of course, of course. So we're on week four of the Pitts League that just finished this past weekend. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the scores this past weekend. So Team Anonymous played the Vets. Team Anonymous was victorious 60 to 35. You had uh, Lauren Cooper with 16 points and Kalika Francis with the Vets at 17 points. Renee Strong uh, defeated Black Lives Matter 52 36. Keanu Tate with 18 points for Renee Strong and Epiphany Brown with 17 points for Black Lives Matter. Then you have JNR's Mob defeated Young Kings 91 to 72. J Dub Jamal Brown had 35, while Devin Sweetney had 31 for Young Kings. 
Um, also, we had Core versus Black Power. Core defeated Black Power 84 to 78. Hugh Jones, better known as Baby Shaq, had 25. And Black Power's D'Angelo Vaughn, better known as Lo, <laughs> had 24 points. Um, you had Baseline, who also defeated N-O-T-M-E, E-N-T, not me and E-N-T. Uh, BJ Byron Jones had 23 points for baseline, and Jerome Jones had 23 points for not me ENT. Uh, no losses. Rich Grills defeated Sam's Ballers 90 to 73. Ronnie Clark for no losses. Rich Gang Grills, excuse me, had 25 points, while Lou Simpson for Sam's Ballers had 18 points. Um, also, you had Black Lives Matter defeated Bird Gang 51 to 41. These are the Sunday games, by the way. Thank I got you. you. Sunday games. Black Lives Matter defeated Bird Gang 51 to 50, 51 to 41. Excuse me, I'm probably going to butcher your name and I apologize in advance. Nikoya Anderson, 14 points. AJ Johnson for Bird Gang had 13. The, fet, the, the Vets also defeated Renee Strong this weekend, 57-53. Chanita Green with 18 points for the Vets and Danae Hill for 15 points for Renee Strong. Concrete Playground defeated Marilyn Jewell, 63-59. Jasmine Bird for Concrete Playground had 25 points, while Alyssa Morrison had 19 points for Maryland Jewels. And the last couple of games this past weekend, you had JNR's Mob, who also defeated Core 81 to 75. Maurice Creek had 31 points um, for JNR's Mob, while Zaid Hurst had 31 points for Core. Virginia Pride defeated Not Me ENT. Travis Berry had 19 points. Jerome Jones had 22 points for Not Me ENT. And then the final game of the weekend, Young Kings defeated bottom of the five, 71 to 70, while Daniel Brown of Young Kings had 18 points. And Savion Ward had 23 points for bottom of the five. Um, games are same place, same time next weekend. Um, quick rundown, men's teams, J-Dub had 35 over the weekend. Mo Creek had 31. Devin Sweetney with 31. Zaid Hears 31. Baby Shaq, 25. Those were your top men's scores of the weekend. Women's, Jasmine Bird of Concrete Playground, 25. Allison Morrison of Maryland Jewels, 19. Shanita Green of the Vets, 18. Kiana Tate of Renee Strong, 18. And Kalika Francis of the Vets, 17. Same place, same time next week. Make sure you're there. Yes, yes. And also, uh, just quick little, you know, just my little two cents. Um, Concrete Playground, fun team to watch on a woman's side. Very, very fun team. They have a big, and I'm so sorry, I cannot remember your name. She's not fair. Uh, she can do a little bit of everything. Saw so like a little Dirk one-legged from, from the free throw line, putting the ball on the floor a little bit, hit a couple threes, knocking everything that came, <laughs> came down her way in the paint away. Um, so it was fun to watch. Any uh, quick thoughts before we, we close this show? Anything uh, in general in sports? You know? I mean, I know we touched on it briefly. The Caps went in the, the Stanley Cup playoffs, you know, first championship in D.C. in over 20 years. The first one for the Caps ever in their 43 or 44-year existence in the NHL. It was an amazing series. I watched every game. I made my mom watch hockey, and I think she likes it now, so that's good. Um, I'm really happy for Ovechkin. Um, I think now a lot of people are – you know, going into the whole thing of who's the best all-around player in the D.C. area, not in just one particular sport. Um, and I think Ovechkin is up there. I mean, he's been in the league 13 years. You know, he's he led the, the he led the NHL this year in goals. He got a 600 goal already. He's an animal. And the thing I like about him the most is he plays with like he plays with his heart. Like he looks like he has so much fun every single time he plays. And one thing that a lot of people should watch him that wants to be a leader, i.e. LeBron, um, is how excited he is when his teammates score or when his teammates do something and he's not even out there. He was so engaged in the whole series the entire time. I just thought it was amazing. And congratulations to the Caps, all the Caps fans. I believe the Caps have a, a, a too many more fans that they just bred through this playoff series. Um, you know, this run that they had this past uh, series, you know, they clinched every series on the road throughout the entire playoffs. They clinched every series on the road. They lost their first two playoff games of the, of the playoffs. So, you know, they went through a lot. They finally beat Pittsburgh. That was their one Achilles heel that they could not get by, and they finally did it. And I just think it's amazing for the city. And, I mean, now it's up to all the rest of the D.C. teams to figure out who's going to be next. I got dibs on the Nats. I think the Nats will do it next. And I guess we'll just see. Cardell, anything? Uh, 
Jody Meeks, uh, re-up with the Wizards. Um, you know, exercise his option to stay with the Wizards, you know. So that's another shooter that they terribly miss in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to serve 19 games of the 25-game suspension to start next season. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, no more of that and he come in ready to play. Yep, and my last little two cents, uh, this WNBA rookie class, if y'all haven't been watching, please get a chance to watch. Mm -hmm. it is, this is a very, 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 mm -hmm. very, very, very like, talented class. Like the way that we talked about the NBA 2003 96. NBA draft or 96. the 96 NBA draft. Yeah. And I know it's early, but hey, look, y'all could judge me on this and I'm here for it. I'm not the only one, by the way, but this WNBA rookie class, if, man, is there's some really talented players out this class. And some of them... They're already off the great starts. Others, they just getting their feet wet. Um, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a shift in this league from going forward with whoever got, you know, the big guns out of this draft clash. You're gonna see if some of you know the old guard, you know, it moves out. So we wanna thank everybody for tuning in, man. We'll see you guys uh soon. As always, get over to findersmag.com, on sports.com. And uh this was the focus TV.